In this lesson, we're going to learn how to write chemical formulas for binary ionic compounds. Every compound can be identified by a chemical formula. Chemical formulas show the different elements that make up a compound and their relative proportions. We use subscripts to identify the number of particles of each type. If there is no, script, no subscript after an element symbol, it is understood that there is one particle of that element in the compound. Let's look at a couple of examples. The first example, H2O, which everyone will know as water. We'll notice the subscript 2 after the H. This indicates that there are two atoms of hydrogen for every atom of oxygen. As a reminder, water is a covalent or a molecular compound. It's a little different than the ionic compounds that we're going to be discussing. Example 2 is an ionic compound. And in this compound, there are two atoms of sodium, one sulfur atom, and four oxygen atoms in every particle of Na2SO4. A binary ionic compound is an ionic compound made up of atoms of two elements. In ionic compounds, the metal or positive ion is always written before the nonmetal or negative ion. So as an example, CAS, the chemical formula for calcium sulfide, calcium is a metal, sulfur is a nonmetal, and we can see from the formula that there's one ion of each. For ionic compounds, the ion charge is balanced and equal to zero. How do we determine the ion charge? For that, we can look at the periodic table. The periodic table is full of useful information, and we can see the ion charge for any atom is written to the right of the chemical formula. So for example, if we look at the nitrogen or nitride ion, we can see clearly that it has a charge of negative 3, located in the top right-hand corner. Some elements, like iron, have more than one possible ion charge. Those ions are called multivalent. You can see iron right there. It can have a charge of positive 3 or positive 2. We'll talk about those in a later lesson. How do we write formulas for binary, binary ionic compounds? There are several steps. The first one is to write the ions and their relative charge as a superscript. The second step is to determine the total charge by adding the ion charges together. If the ion charge is added to zero, you're done. All you need to do is write the element symbols, metal first, and you'll have the formula. If the ion charge is not balanced, add metal and or nonmetal ions as needed to balance the charge. Let's look at some examples. In the first example, we'll use sodium chloride, or table salt. So sodium chloride is a compound of sodium and chlorine. First step would be to write down the element symbols in their charges. So sodium has a charge of positive one, chlorine has a charge of negative one. We can determine those charges from the periodic table. We'll add the ion charges together, and we see that they balance out at zero. This means that the final formula can be written without subscripts, and so the final formula becomes NaCl. Let's look at potassium oxide. So potassium oxide is a compound of potassium and oxygen. We'll follow the same steps for the first example. We'll write down the element symbols and their charges, so K plus and O2 minus. We'll add the ion charges, which are positive 1 and negative 2, which equals negative 1, so the charges aren't balanced. So therefore, we need to add additional ions to balance the charges. So we'll add another potassium ion, giving us a total charge of positive 2, which balances the negative 2 charge of the oxide ion, We'll count the number of ions of each and give us a final formula for potassium oxide, which is K2O. In example three, aluminum oxide. First step is to write the element symbols in their charges. We can see that those charges don't balance, so we need to add additional ions to balance the charges. So if we add one aluminum ion, and two more oxygen, oxygen ions, we can see that the charges balance out. So two aluminum ions give me a posit positive six charge. Three oxide ions give me a negative six charge. So they balance out at zero. So the final formula for aluminum oxide becomes Al2O3. Let's try these. So try the following three questions. Write down the chemical formula and you can check your answers. I would hit pause right now while you do the work.
So I hope this helps you name or write chemical formulas for binary ionic compounds. Stay tuned for future lessons.